Chapter 10 Good Things to Come Hebrews 10 verses 1 to 2 For the law having a shadow of good things to come, and not the very image of the things, can never with those sacrifices which they offered year by year continually make the comers thereunto perfect. For then would they not have ceased to be offered? Because that the worshippers once purged should have had no more conscience of sins. The believers under Israel's law could not be made perfect, complete, because their system was only a picture, shadow, of the real thing that was to come and therefore it could not complete them, but the new covenant will. A shadow of good things to come, this is for Israel in the kingdom, not us in the dispensation of grace today. This speaking of the real things, in the new covenant, and its kingdom, that makes the shadow, the law, the Old Testament. The new covenant will do for them what the old could never do, because it was only a weak shadow of the new. This verse can be better understood by what Paul said to us in the dispensation of grace concerning the law and things to come in Israel's kingdom. Colossians 2 verses 16 to 17 Let no man therefore judge you in meat, or in drink, or in respect of an holy day, or of the new moon, or of the Sabbath days, which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. A shadow of things to come, the Old Testament laws, do not serve as a shadow during the dispensation of grace. It serves as a shadow of good things to come in the ages to come that Paul speaks about as following this current dispensation. Ephesians 2 verses 7 and 11, 13 KJV, that in the ages to come he might shew the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. Wherefore remember, that ye, being in time past, Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands. But now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off, are made nigh by the blood of Christ. Hebrews 10 verses 3 to 4, but in those sacrifices, there is a remembrance again made of sins every year. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. Israel was under a short account system under the Old Testament. We are in a paid and full system today. Israel will be under the new covenant after this dispensation of grace ends at the rapture, and they will all be saved, future sense, in one day as they enter into their kingdom with their Savior and inherit their promises. Acts 3 verse 19, Repent ye therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Hebrews 10 verses 5 to 7, Wherefore when he cometh into the world, he saith, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared me, in burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin thou hast had no pleasure. Then said I, Lo, I come, in the volume of the book it is written of me, to do thy will, O God. Psalm 40 verse 6, Sacrifice and offering thou didst not desire, mine ears hast thou opened, burnt offering and sin offering hast thou not required. The author of Hebrews quotes King David's psalm about the Messiah's crucifixion, to tell us that Israel's offerings for 1,500 years were only a temporary covering of sins. They all pictured Christ offering himself. This offering was once and for all, for all sin of every age. Hebrews 10 verses 8 to 10 above when he said, Sacrifice, and offering, and burnt offerings, and offering for sin thou, wouldest not, neither hadst pleasure therein, which are offered by the law. Then said he, Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. He taketh away the first, that he may establish the second. By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Psalm 40 verse 7, Then said I, Lo, I come, in the volume of the book, it is written of me. He taketh away the first, that he may establish the second. Christ established Israel's new covenant by taking away the first covenant at the cross. Remember, the body of Christ is not Israel. The body of Christ was never under the old covenant, nor is it under the new covenant. We are not a covenant people. We are under the mystery program given to the body of Christ by God through Paul. The old covenant has been replaced by the new covenant and Israel will need to recognize that during the time of the tribulation period, the wrong crowd will be in control of the temple just as it was back in the first century. Hebrews is calling them away from that old system. The Antichrist will allow unbelieving Israel to rebuild their temple in that day. The two witnesses will be calling the Israel of God to come out of the old system and into the new. The witch will. This is an Old English way of saying, that will. Hebrews 10 verses 11 to 14, And every priest standeth daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices, which can never take away sins. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, 
sat down on the right hand of God, from henceforth expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. For by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. Psalm 110 verse 1 A Psalm of David The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand, until I make thine enemies thy footstool. The high priest of the new covenant sat down after he offered his own blood in the heavenly tabernacle, not made with hands, because his job was finished. There was no chair to sit on in the earthly tabernacle, or temple, because the priest's job was never done, because their sacrifice was not sufficient to do the job under that system. The sacrifices that were performed twice daily were a constant reminder that one day the Son of God would give himself as the perfect sacrifice for mankind's sin. Today, Jesus sits in exile in heaven, waiting until his enemies be made his footstool at the end of the time of Jacob's trouble, when he will return in power and great glory to set up his kingdom. Jeremiah 30 verse 7 Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it, it is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. He hath perfected forever. The word perfected means to make complete, a finished product. Hebrews 10 verses 15 to 17, whereof the Holy Ghost also is a witness to us. For after that he had said before, this is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, saith the Lord, I will put my laws into their hearts, and in their minds will I write them, and their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. Jeremiah 31 verses 33 to 34, But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my law in their inward parts, and write it in their hearts, and will be their God, and they shall be my people. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor, and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them unto the greatest of them, saith the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and I will remember their sin no more. Israel is still waiting for the forgiveness of sins, but we today possess that under grace. Their salvation is a future national salvation that will occur in one day when Israel enters into her kingdom and is born again in a day. They were born spiritually as a nation at Mount Sinai and will be born again as a nation at the entrance into their millennial kingdom after the tribulation period comes to an end and God's wrath has been poured out. Hebrews 10 verses 18 to 20 Now where remission of these is, there is no more offering for sin. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which he hath consecrated for us, through the veil, that is to say, his flesh. There will be a temptation by the Antichrist and those that follow him to try to get the remnant, little flock, to sacrifice in the rebuilt temple during the tribulation period. God will not be in that temple, and the 144,000, plus the two witnesses will be preaching against that as the author of Hebrews is forewarning its hearers not to participate in it. A new and living way, that old system will have no benefit for them because their real high priest has already offered the only sacrifice they will ever need. All they need to do is to believe that and accept his forgiveness. Jesus said that he was the way, the truth, and the life. He was the new and living way for those under that message. John 14 verse 6, Hebrews 10 verses 21 to 23, And having an high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience, and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. The house of God, this is speaking about the house of Israel. Hebrews 3 verse 6. These saints are to hold fast their profession of their faith without wavering because Christ did not waver nor does his promise fluctuate based on their feelings at any given moment, because he is always faithful. They must endure unto the end. Matthew 24 verse 14. During the tribulation period a believer does not have eternal security as we do in the dispensation of grace today. They must hold fast their profession without wavering. Don't. Spiritualize this. Accept it. They cannot say, since I trusted in the Messiah, I can take the mark of the beast. If they do so, they will be eternally damned. Our bodies washed with pure water. Just as John the Baptist preached the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins 2,000 years ago, so will the tribulation saints have to submit to the same baptism of repentance. Matthew 3 verse 11 and Mark 1 verse 4 both line up with what Peter told Israel in Acts 2 verse 38. Matthew 24 verse 14. This is not something we are to be doing today. Water baptism in this dispensation doesn't give its recipients the remission of sins because we are not Israel under the law. We are the body of Christ under grace. Romans 6 verses 13 to 14. Ezekiel 36 verses 25 to 27. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you, and ye shall be clean, from all your filthiness, and from all your idols, will I cleanse you. A new heart also will I give you, 
and a new spirit will I put within you, and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you an heart of flesh, and I will put my spirit within you, and cause you to walk in my statutes, and ye shall keep my judgments, and do them. This is speaking of the new covenant God makes with the house of Israel, and the house of Judah, in the kingdom. Jeremiah 31, 31, 34. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. Over and over again, the author of Hebrews speaks about a different kind of salvation than that spoken of by Paul. Today, the body of Christ has eternal security, from the moment we believe the gospel found in 1 Corinthians 15 verses 1 to 4. We do not have to hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, as they will be alive in the 70th week of Daniel after the dispensation of grace has ended and they will have to believe the gospel of the kingdom. Matthew 4 verses 17 to 23, and Matthew 24 verses 13 to 14. Hebrews 10 verses 24 to 25, And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more, as ye see the day approaching, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as the manner of some is, this is speaking of the day of Christ's appearing when every eye shall see him. It is not the rapture for the body of Christ, because you cannot see that day approaching. We have no seven-year calendar of events that we can mark off to know roughly when that day is approaching, but Israel in the tribulation period does. They are encouraged to assemble as believers more and more as the times get worse, because they will need the support of other believers to provoke them unto love and good works. Hebrews 10 verses 26 to 27, For if we sin willfully after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins, but a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation, which shall devour the adversaries. If we sin willfully after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. Have you sinned after you were saved? Yes, you have. Then you have an incurable problem if these verses are speaking to you. These verses are not written to us in the church age. They are written to the Hebrews under the law. Christ is our once and for all, sacrifice for sin, but Israel was on a short account system. They, the Jews, continually had to keep offering for their latest sins since their last offering. There was no offering for Israel that gave them forgiveness in the future so they had to sacrifice every year. These tribulation believers will have works that go along with their faith after the rapture, just as James teaches the twelve tribes that are scattered abroad, which is an Hebrew epistle written to Jews going through the tribulation period. James 1 verses 1 to 2. Read the first verse of the book of James and tell me who it is written to. James 1 verse 1, James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting, that is not you. You are not the twelve tribes scattered abroad. You are the church, which is Christ's body. You cannot run to the Greek and say verse 26 of chapter 10 doesn't mean what it says, because it means exactly what it says. It is not written to me, or to you in the dispensation of grace, it is written to Israel under a different dispensation. Hebrews 10 verses 28 to 29, He that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses of how much sore punishment, suppose ye, shall he be thought worthy, who hath trodden underfoot the Son of God, and hath counted the blood of the covenant, wherewith he was sanctified, an unholy thing, and hath done despite unto the Spirit of grace, hath trodden underfoot the Son of God, and hath counted the blood of the covenant, wherewith he was sanctified, an unholy thing, we in the body of Christ, are not under any covenant. He did however, make two covenants with Israel, the old covenant, and the new covenant, hath done despite unto the spirit of grace, is to openly oppose, be against, or to defy the spirit of grace. It is to oppose God by supporting something he no longer supports, because he has a new covenant that he has paid a great price to inaugurate. Who is man to say, we will stick with your old plan? God says they will be attributing the blood of the new covenant as an unholy thing. They are literally saying, I don't want your blood sacrifice Jesus, I will bring my own sacrifice from a calf, or a goat, and if you don't like it tough, we do that when we place tradition above the word of God. There was Moses' covenant, and then the new covenant in Christ's blood, and if you think the punishment was rough under. Moses' covenant, the writer of Hebrews, tells you that it is even worse for someone who rejects Jesus. Hebrews 10 verses 30 to 31, For we know him that hath said, Vengeance belongeth unto me, I will recompense, saith the Lord. And again, the Lord shall judge his people. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Deuteronomy 32 verses 35 to 36, To me belongeth vengeance, and recompense. Their foot shall slide in due time, for the day of their calamity is at hand, 
and the things that shall come upon them make haste. For the Lord shall judge his people, and repent himself for his servants, when he seeth that their power is gone, and there is none shut up, or left. Luke 12 verse 5, But I will forewarn you whom ye shall fear, fear him, which after he hath killed hath power to cast into hell, yeah, I say unto you, fear him. This is talking about religious people who in the tribulation period decide to follow the old covenant, and who reject the new. It will have eternal consequences for them. Today, messianic believers are being spiritually drugged into going back under the law when their sacrifice has already been paid. They call it Jewish roots, but what many of them do is try to put Jews back under the law when they are under grace. They have to keep the Sabbath day and the feast days, and they don't believe in the rapture, plus they think they are going through the tribulation period. They don't understand who they are today in the body of Christ, that they are not Israel under the law. In this present dispensation of grace, there is no Jew or Gentile, but the one new man of Ephesians. Hebrews 10 verses 32 to 33, But call to remembrance the former days, in which, after ye were illuminated, ye endured a great fight of afflictions, partly, whilst ye were made a gazing stock, both by reproaches and afflictions, and, partly, whilst ye became companions of them that were so used. The former days, this is speaking of those who believed the gospel of the kingdom when it was first preached by John and the apostles. For a Jew to turn to Christ in the first century meant almost guaranteed persecution and rejection from their families and friends. It meant the loss of their jobs and homes. For some it meant prison and even death. Hebrews 10 verse 34, For ye had compassion of me in my bonds, and took joyfully the spoiling of your goods, knowing in yourselves that ye have in heaven a better and an enduring substance. Ye had compassion of me in my bonds, this statement means that the writer of this epistle was known by its recipients. Some assume that the writer of Hebrews must be Paul, because he was in jail. Thousands of believers were persecuted for their faith by Rome in those days, and in the early days it was Saul, Paul, putting them in jail. Peter was in jail long before Paul was, while Jews were being persecuted and had their goods spoiled, just like will happen in the tribulation period. I am not saying that Peter wrote Hebrews, but he is a much better candidate than Paul because Paul could not have written the book according to the Hebrews 2 verse 3, and took joyfully the spoiling of your goods. The Hebrews that believed Jesus was the Messiah were kicked out of the synagogues, arrested by Saul of Tarsus, Paul, and forced to scatter from Jerusalem taking only what possessions they could carry. They lost their homes and jobs, and took it joyfully as they went everywhere, preaching the word. Acts 8 verses 1 to 4, Ye have in heaven a better and an enduring substance, this is speaking of their treasures that are laid up for them in heaven. Matthew 6 verse 20, Hebrews 10 verses 35 to 36, Cast not away therefore your confidence, which hath great recompense of reward. For ye have need of patience, that, after ye have done the will of God, ye might receive the promise. Cast not away therefore your confidence. Their confidence is that Jesus is the Christ will soon recompense them for the persecutions they face. Great recompense of reward, this is speaking about being recompensed in the kingdom for their faithfulness. The promise, they will inherit the promise made to the Jewish people if they have done the will of God during that time. The promise of a millennial rest in their earthly kingdom. Hebrews 10 verse 37, For yet a little while, and he that shall come will come, and will not tarry. For yet a little while, this is written for Israel when the gospel of the kingdom is being preached as at hand. He that shall come will come, Jesus their king will come and set up the kingdom which during the tribulation period will be at hand again as it was in the days of Christ's earthly ministry, but this time it will not be delayed because of Israel's rejection. Hebrews 10 verses 38 to 39, Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But we are not of them who draw back unto perdition but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. The just shall live by faith. The believer is to trust God to take care of him daily, as the prayer in Matthew 6 teaches those Jewish believers to follow during those times. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. The drawing back means to not live by faith during the time spoken about. Not trusting God to take care of them and then taking the mark of the beast so that they may buy and sell. This will be unpardonable, and God will not have any more pleasure in that person. This is not how Paul explains, the just shall live by faith in Romans 1 verse 17 and Galatians 3 verse 11. Here it is stated that those who draw back go unto perdition. Perdition, this is damnation of the soul for eternity, as opposed to believing unto the saving of the soul. That is not doctrine for the dispensation of grace, but for Israel's program under the law covenant. In John 17 verse 12, Judas is called the son of perdition, meaning the son of damnation. The words damnable, and damnation are translated from the same root word for perdition, apolia, 
in 2 Peter 2 verses 1 to 3. 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 3 also calls the Antichrist the son of perdition. Revelation 17 verses 8 to 11. Chapter 11, Faith. Hebrews 11 verses 1 to 2. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it, the elders obtained a good report. The substance of things hoped for, these are the promises given to Israel of ruling in an earthly kingdom with the Messiah. The elders, the elders are the people mentioned beginning in verse 4 and going on through the end of the chapter. Hebrews 11 verse 3, Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. The worlds were framed by the word of God, words cannot be seen, but the very words of God made everything that we see. Genesis 1 verses 1 to 31. Hebrews 11 verse 4, By faith Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained. Witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead, yet speaketh. And by it, Abel's faith. Abel heard the word of the Lord from his parents to bring a blood sacrifice, while Cain decided to bring a work of his hands. God wanted only the offering that he taught Adam to bring, and Abel took God at his word and did as he was told. He being dead yet speaketh, Abel's actions spoke as a testimony of his faith even to this day, and they will continue to speak to those Hebrews in the tribulation period and be a source of strength. Hebrews 11 verses 5 to 6, By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death, and was not found, because God had translated him. For before his translation he had this testimony, that he pleased God. But without faith it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Enoch was translated that he should not see death. Enoch pleased God because of his faith in what God said. What was it that Enoch believed by faith? Genesis 4 tells us that Enoch walked with God after the birth of his son, Methuselah. Why not before? He pleased God. Jude elaborates just what it was that Enoch believed and preached that pleased God. He preached the judgment of God on the world and because he believed it by faith having seen nothing to prove it, God took him out beforehand, because he alone exercised faith for three hundred straight years. Jude 14 to 16, and Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints, to execute judgment upon all, and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed, and of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. These are murmurers, complainers, walking after their own lusts, and their mouth speaketh great swelling words, having men's persons in admiration, because of advantage. Enoch never saw the Lord come with ten thousands of his saints, to execute judgment upon all. Enoch set the table for Noah's preaching soon after. Genesis 5 verses 19 to 24, and Deuteronomy 33 verses 1 to 2. Hebrews 11 verse 7, By faith, Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world, and became heir of the righteousness, which is by faith. Genesis 6. Righteousness did not come to Noah by his deeds. He did not wake up one day and say I will do this for God to receive righteousness from him. He simply believed God, and acted upon his belief, and then he received the righteousness of God. Hebrews 11 verses 8 to 10. By faith Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed, and he went out not knowing whither he went. By faith, he sojourned in the land of promise, as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise, for he looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Genesis 11, 26-25-8 Abraham heard God's word, and he acted by faith on what he had heard, and he like all the rest received righteousness by his faith. Faith motivates obedience. He looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Abraham moved around a lot, which required he lived in a tent, because he was looking for a city. New Jerusalem, he didn't find it then. He will in the kingdom, that. City's gates will have his twelve grandsons' names written on them, not his son's name, because the names represent the twelve tribes of Israel. It is Israel's city folks, not the body of Christ's. Jesus was not talking to you in John 14 verse 2. His audience was the lost sheep of the house of Israel. A city which hath foundations, the wall of that city has twelve foundations, and in them the names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. 
The twelve were apostles of the circumcision, not to the Gentiles. Paul was the apostle of the Gentiles. People want Paul to be the twelfth apostle, to give them access to that city. Matthias is the twelfth apostle to Israel. Read Acts 1 and believe it by faith. Don't try to steal Israel's promises. Revelation 21 verses 1 to 27. Hebrews 11 verses 11 to 16. Through faith also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful who had promised. Therefore, sprang there even of one, and him as good as dead, so many as the stars of the sky in multitude, and as the sand which is by the seashore innumerable. These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, and were persuaded of them, and embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. For they that say such things, declare plainly that they seek a country. And truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might have had opportunity to have returned. But now they desire a better country, that is, an heavenly, wherefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he hath prepared for them a city, and him as good as dead. This is speaking of Abram, Abraham, and his age. His body was well past the age of producing any offspring so much so that his body was said to be as good as dead. Romans 4 verse 19. The promises, these were all the promises made to Abraham and his descendants. Having seen them afar off, is there an explanation of this in the scriptures? Yes. John 8 verse 56. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. Confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth, Peter confirms this very plainly using the exact same words. Peter was an apostle to the circumcision. 1 Peter 2 verses 11 to 12 Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts, which war against the soul, having your conversation honest among the Gentiles, that, whereas they speak against you as evildoers, they may by your good works, which they shall behold, glorify God in the day of visitation. A better country, that is, an heavenly, an heavenly country, kingdom that will come down to earth, where God's will shall be done on earth as it is in heaven. Matthew 6 verse 10. He hath prepared for them a city, John 14 verse 7, and Revelation 21 verses 1 to 27. New Jerusalem has been prepared for the nation of Israel, not us in the body of Christ today. It is their inheritance. Only those Gentiles who were saved under the law, and those saved during the tribulation period will inherit a place prepared for them by Jesus where they shall dwell for all eternity with Emmanuel, God with us. The city of New Jerusalem is also called the Bride of the Lamb according to the Bible. Tradition teaches that it is the church, but tradition is wrong. Revelation 21 verses 1 to 4. Hebrews 11 verses 17 to 19. By faith Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac. And he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said, that in Isaac shall thy seed be called, accounting that God, was able to raise him up, even from the dead, from whence also he received him in a figure. What faith Abraham displayed, because the man offered up his son knowing God would have to raise him up because he promised that it would be through Isaac that his seed would be as the sand upon the seashore in multitude. It is one thing to say you believe God, it is another thing to act upon it as Abraham did. That's faith. From whence also he received him in a figure. God received Isaac in a figure as an offering his only begotten son. Jesus Christ is God's only begotten son that he received literally as a sacrifice. Abraham actually had an older son than Isaac, but God did not count that son because he was not the son of the promise. Hebrews 11 verse 20, By faith Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come. Things to come, he told them what God would give them and their descendants in the future. Genesis 27 verses 27 to 29 and 27 colon 39 40. Hebrews 11 verse 21, by faith, Jacob, when he was a dying, blessed both the sons of Joseph and worshiped, leaning upon the top of his staff. Genesis 48 verses 8 to 20. Joseph knew because God said to bless the younger son of Joseph with the blessing of the firstborn because God told him to and he believed God knew what he was doing, even when Joseph did not. Hebrews 11 verse 22, By faith Joseph, when he died, made mention of the departing of the children of Israel, and gave commandment concerning his bones. Genesis 50, 24 25, Made mention of the departing of the children of Israel. Joseph by faith knew his people would depart from Egypt because God said so, and so he, acting on faith, told his people to take his body back to Israel when they would return. That's faith. Hebrews 11 verse 23, By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hid three months of his parents, because they saw he was a proper child, and they were not afraid of the king's commandment. They saw he was a proper child, 
Moses' parents knew that God was supposed to deliver his people, and they believed God and protected their son, and God opened the heart of Pharaoh's daughter to take him in. In Acts 7 verse 20, Stephen says that baby Moses was exceeding fair. It is the same Greek word used for the word proper in Hebrews 11 verse 23. Hebrews 11 verses 24 to 27, By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God, than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt. For he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. By faith, he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured, as seeing him who was invisible. The recompense of the reward. By faith Moses said, I am a Jew, and he knew that Pharaoh would want to kill him, but he knew that God would protect him because he promised to be with him. Hebrews 2 verse 2 and 1035. Hebrews 11 verse 28. Through faith, he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood, lest he that destroyed the firstborn should touch them. The sprinkling of blood, this was the blood of a lamb that was applied to the doorposts. Hebrews 11 verses 29 to 31. By faith they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land which the Egyptians assaying to do were drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down, after they were compassed about seven days. By faith, the harlot Rahab perished not with them that believed not, when she had received the spies with peace. Joshua 2 verse 9 14. How many of you would follow a commander without the fear of death if he told you we are going to march around the city seven times, and then shout and the walls will fall down? Not any most likely. That is faith my friend. A Gentile who blessed Israel was spared because she believed that Israel's God was the one true God, and she went against all her people because she had faith that God was going to deliver the city into Israel's hand because he said so. That's faith. Hebrews 11 verses 32 to 35 And what shall I more say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon, and of Barak, and of Samson, and of Jephthah, of David also, and Samuel, and of the prophets who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, waxed valiant in fight, turned to flight the armies of the aliens. Women received their dead raised to life again, and others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection, they suffered standing for what was right and they will be rewarded one day when they are resurrected into their kingdom. Those that suffer all the temptation and trials of the tribulation period will receive their kingdom, and they will be received by their king. Hebrews 11 verses 36 to 40, And others had trial of cruel mockings and scourgings, yeah, moreover of bonds and imprisonment, they were stoned, they were sawn asunder, were tempted, were slain with the sword, they wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy, they wandered in deserts, and in mountains, and in dens and caves of the earth. And these all, having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise, God having provided some better thing for us, that they without us should not be made perfect. The message of Hebrews can be summed up in these last two verses. God wants the readers of the book of Hebrews that are going through the time of Jacob's trouble to obtain a good report and the only way that will be possible is by faith. The only way to enter into their, Israel's promise, kingdom is to follow the example of those who went on before them. Received not the promise, they did not receive the promise immediately like the believers in the tribulation period will, because they had thousands of years separating them from it. But these will have on a few short years, months, or days. They without us should not be made perfect. Jesus was made perfect, a finished product. It is finished, through suffering. Hebrews 5 verse 9.